Vanessa. I'm here today to show you my nonfiction November TBR. Super exciting. When I first started creating this TBR, I thought I was going to take it really simple and I was going to pick just one book for each category and be done with it. But in the last week, I've just gotten really excited about nonfiction. I haven't felt this excitement in quite a few months, so I'm going to roll with it and just show you all the things that I would love to be able to read, um, even though it might not happen. So I did pick books that fit the categories for the most part. So for style, the first one that I chose was a funny, lighthearted one. That's one thing that I really want to focus on is nonfiction that is maybe um, more conversational than I did last year for Nonfiction November. So I chose Hola Papi. This is How to Come Out in a Walmart Parking Lot and Other Life Lessons by John Paul Brammer. This is a memoir from John Paul Brammer who writes an advice column. It's just little essays all about different aspects of being LGBTQ and Latinx and I'm really excited to get to this one. That one is for style. Then I have two for style that I don't have with me because they are either on their way or their release is that come out in November so they don't exist yet. They are both in style because they're both graphic nonfiction works so they have a different style to them. One of them is called Wake. It's all about women-led slave revolts. It sounded like a topic that I had never really heard much about and I feel like every slave revolt in history that I've read about has been led by men. So I believe in this one the author looked into a lot of historical information and did a lot of research to figure out all of these women. I also would love to read The Waiting which comes out at the beginning of November. This is Kim Zook, Gendry Kim's new work and I loved Grass that I read last year. I believe this one is translated as well. I think the translator's name is Janet Hong. That one should be arriving very soon. And then for treatment, I have two books, two that I've been really looking forward to like all year and one in particular, probably my most anticipated nonfiction read of the year so far, especially the last half of the year, is Invisible Child. This is Poverty, Survival, and Hope in an American City. City. It's by Andrea Elliott. From my understanding of it, it follows one child named Asani and in New York City, Brooklyn. It says, in a sweeping narrative, Andrea Elliott weaves the story of Dasani's childhood with the history of her family, tracing the passage of their ancestors from slavery to the Great Migration North. As Dasani comes of age, the homeless crisis in New York City has exploded amid the deepening chasm between rich and poor, and seeing all the gentrification that is happening in Brooklyn. Based on nearly a decade of reporting, Invisible Child eliminates some of the most critical issues issues in contemporary America through the life of one remarkable girl. So it follows just one person and it views all of these issues that are happening in the city and in the country at large. The author Andrew Elliott is an um, investigative reporter for the New York Times. And then the other book that I've been really looking forward to that works for treatment is another book that's heavy like the pages are really nice glossy just like invisible child and that's from a whisper to a rallying cry the killing of vincent chin and the trial that galvanized the asian american movement so this looks into um what america was like in 1982 there was a lot of anti-asian sentiment in the 80s as car manufacturers japanese car manufacturers were growing two men beat vincent chin to death as a result of all of these tensions and their their bigotry and hatred and they got off really leniently they only paid like three thousand dollars in fines and they did not go to prison so this sparked this big movement and it's going to trace how that did so um i've never learned anything about vincent chin and i feel like it's time for me to do that and it also is actually a young adult book which is interesting to me i think this category is going to be the best one in my opinion then after that is collection and again i'm trying to read somewhat light-hearted, sarcastic, funny things, witty things. So I have The Witches Are Coming by Lindy West in this one. I really enjoyed Shrill. I read it last year for the first time and I've been wanting to pick up more Lindy West. Um, I think her essays go down really easily. She's very conversational, kind of like what I'm hoping to get out of um, Hola Papi. I want some pizzazz. This one I believe looks into um, feminism and me too. Yeah. <laughs> this is feminism gone too far. This is injustice. This is a witch hunt and uses that to talk about um, misogyny and all kinds of other prejudice that is happening to women. For collection, I also have The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin. It's been on my mind to read this and I saw it while I was browsing the stacks to find all these other books. It's like, oh, I should add that there. Um, and I put this in collection because it is two essays that are put together in one um, of James Baldwin writing to his nephew, I believe, about race. And it was published in 1960. Three, I think still is important today so I'm hoping to read this and then for industry I have two books 
one I don't have with me. I have to, um, I had to put it on hold from a different library system, and that's Hip Makers. And this is supposed to look into how popular culture gets to be the way that it is, and what goes viral, and what catches our attention as consumers. I'm also hoping that this one is a more lighthearted kind of a read, where I learn a lot about a topic, but I'm not necessarily like reading really sad, depressing things. I wanted to try to find a balance with my TBR this year because last year my TBR was like straight depressing the whole time. The last one that I want to read is Girly Drinks by Mallory O'Mara. Mallory O'Mara wrote the something from the Black Lagoon. The Lady from the Black Lagoon that I loved a couple years ago at this point I want to say. It was a really interesting look into the beginning of Hollywood from the point of view of women who were creating all of these monsters and they never really got any credit for that and I really enjoyed her narration style. She became a part of the story as she was like trying to find more information about her subject in The Lady in the Black Lagoon and yeah I just had a fun time reading that book so I saw that she has a new book out. It's called Girly Drinks and it looks into women and alcohol and how women were involved and she goes back in time too so she looks into ancient Sumerian beer makers and Russian bootlegging grandmothers to iconic bartenders and bar owners in the 20th century. She seems to me like a really witty and funny person and I'm hoping that I get that out of this book as well. And then the last one that doesn't really fit into any category, it probably doesn't, I just didn't think hard enough, is Squirrel Hill. The Tree of Life Synagogue Shooting and the Soul of a Neighborhood by Mark Oppenheimer. Um, I've been reading a lot of reviews about this book being really interesting because it's not looking so much into the victims or the person who committed this atrocity, but looking more into the, a neighborhood and how that neighborhood is dealing with this tragedy in the span of a year or so. It's like a different look after reading things like Parkland um, and Columbine. Mark Oppenheimer does have connections to that neighborhood. Um, which I also think will serve this book good. That is it for my nonfiction November TBR. Have you read any of these books? Please let me know in the comments. Or if you'd like to read any of these books, also let me know in the comments. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.